Now let's talk about the different kinds of effects that we will see on a transmission line. If our transmission line is long enough that we need to consider it, one of the primary effects is going to be delay. Imagine what would happen if we had two different memory chips and we wanted to trigger them at exactly the same time. Suppose that we used a piece of wire that was longer in one case than the other. Here is a, a delta L that's longer than our first transmission line. If that delta L is long enough to be considered a transmission line, the clock pulse that we are sending to the first chip is going to be delayed when it reaches the second chip. Another effect that we're going to see is reflection. In this case, the pulse that we send down the line gets right here, so it's moving down the line and it gets to where the chip is, and then a portion of it reflects back. That, that reflection might be positive, or the reflection might be negative. The reflection might be separated from the initial pulse, as shown here, or it might overlap on the initial pulse. It could be possible to have a negative reflection that would combine with the positive pulse and make it go away, make it appear as if there was no pulse at all. So reflections can also be fairly serious problems. Another problem that we see is power loss. Power is lost in two places. One is in the insulator between the two pieces of wire that make up the transmission line, and the other one is in the conductor of the transmission line itself. With a perfect insulator and a perfect conductor, there would be no power loss, and our line would be considered lossless. But it is, but you virtually can never have a perfect insulator and a perfect conductor, so you do get some loss. Typically, as you increase your frequency, you also increase your loss. Now one other effect that we will see in transmission lines is dispersion. In dispersion, the velocity of propagation is a function of frequency. That means that different frequencies propagate at different, at different speeds. So suppose that I had this pulse. This pulse is made up of an infinite number of frequencies, and if they do not always travel at the same rate, then this pulse is going to be dispersed. What that usually ends up looking like is something like this. where you get a tail on the front end of your pulse, you get a tail on the back end of your pulse. Dispersion means that you don't get as nice a rise time or as nice and well-defined a fall time on your pulses. And sometimes the bounces that you're seeing because of dispersion may even interfere with your, with your system as well. Now let's talk about the different propagation modes on transmission lines. The most common kind of transmission line, and the kind that we are going to limit ourselves to in this class, is called TEM. What that means is transverse, electric, and magnetic. It means that the electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field, and that both of those are also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. TEM transmission lines are any two conductor line. Any two conductor line will behave as a TEM line. So our coax, for instance, um, a microstrip, which has a piece of metal up here and an insulator and then a ground plane below, all two conductor lines act like TEM lines. Now let's figure out which direction the electric and magnetic fields are, are seen. Let's use our right hand again. Put your thumb up here. That's going to be the direction of propagation and then use your first finger, that's your pointer finger. Your pointer finger is going to point in the direction of the electric field, and then your third finger, right there, is going to be the magnetic, thing, the magnetic field. So your middle finger is H. So just move, just move those so that they are all perpendicular to each other. It's kind of like holding out a gun and then moving your third finger uh, perpendicular to that. And you could see the direction of propagation and the perpendicular E and H fields.